Greetings. We're going to look at this example from the textbook, number nine. Starting with a homogeneous linear differential equation, x squared y double prime minus 7xy prime plus 16y equals zero. And we're supposed to assume that x to the fourth happens to be a solution to this differential equation. What we'd like to do then is use reduction of order and find a second linearly independent solution. So remember, reduction of order helps us with homogeneous equations, and they do not have to have constant coefficients for it to be of benefit. The principle is we make the assumption that the next function is not a scalar multiple of our original function, but could be rewritten as some other function times the original solution. So we assume that y2 is a new function. I like to call it um, v of x times my y1. So in this case, um, notice that's actually v of x times x to the fourth. But it's always going to be the case that when you're doing a reduction of order problem, it's often easier, especially if you haven't memorized the full form, to start from just looking at it as v of x, y1. So we're saying we want y2 to solve our equation. So what we'll need to do is be able to put y2 into the equation. So we're saying y2 or x squared y2 double prime minus 7xy2 prime plus 16y2 has to equal 0. So now I'd like to replace all the y2s with the expressions, that, the associated expressions based upon the fact that y2 is actually a function multiple v of x times my initial solution y1. So we're going to need to find the derivatives of y2. So y2 prime by the product rule would be v prime times y1 plus v times y1 prime and y2 double prime applying the product rule to the first term that's v double prime y1 plus um, I'm going to keep the v prime the same I'm still all just on this first term here so now I'm going to do y1 prime now I'm going to go over and look at the second term the derivative in the second term, if I differentiate the v first, I get v prime, y1 prime, and then I'm going to keep the v and differentiate the second term, v y1 double prime. And so you'll notice this happens every time. If the y2 double prime is always the second derivative of v times y1 plus two copies of v prime y1 prime plus v times second derivative of y1. So now let's replace these in our expressions here. So I'm going to replace y2 double prime, so that's all x squared times that, minus 7x times the y2 prime, and then finally the 16 copies of the y1. So what we'll do next is we'll regroup the terms that came straight from, or that all happen to be multiples of just v. I'm going to group, take everything that doesn't have a straight v in it first. And then all the other terms should be multiples of v. So I would be left with the x squared times vy1 prime, double prime term minus 7x times the vy1 prime term, and then 16 times y1. So those are all the terms that are multiplied by v. So we had this term was a multiple of v, this term was a multiple of v, this term was a multiple of v. And I said this whole thing should be equal to zero. So I notice the second bracket here this is the original differential equation with y1 plugged in, and we know y1 is a solution. Because of that, I'm going to be able to discard this term, and I know that that whole term is zero. So it's zero times v, which is zero. So what I'm left with is solving this new differential equation, x squared v double prime y1 plus 2x squared v prime y1 prime minus 7x v1 y1 
equals zero. And at this point is the good point to replace your y1s in the original equation. So my y1 was x to the fourth, and therefore its derivative would be four x cubed. So the equation I wanna solve looks like this. Um, I'm gonna multiply the x to the fourth by the x squared in the first term. So I get x to the sixth v double prime plus um, I have two x squared times v prime times four x cubed. So that's eight x to the fifth v prime minus 7x times y1, which was x to the fourth, would be 7x to the fifth v prime equals zero. So now we combine those two terms that are identical, x to the sixth v double prime plus x to the fifth v prime equals zero. So I combined the last two terms. So now I can convert this to a simpler first order differential equation by letting w be a new function that equals the derivative of v. And so now I'm gonna write this, so then dw dx would be v double prime. And so I get x to the sixth times dw dx plus x to the fifth times w equals zero. And I'm going to solve this differential equation. It always, remember, should come out to be both first order and separable at the end of the day. So I'm going to start by dividing everything in sight by x to the sixth. Notice that could lose me a solution, but that's okay. dw dx plus w over x, because I've divided by x to the sixth. And then I'm going to subtract from both sides, so we get dw dx equals negative w over x. Now I'm gonna separate variables. dw negative or dw over w, we'll leave the negative sign on the other side, equals negative one over x dx. And then I integrate. So I get that the natural logarithm of absolute w, remember when you do these, you always should get log absolute w on the left of this step. In fact, equals, um, the logarithm of negative logarithm of absolute x, w is, or plus c, so w is some k e to the negative log of x, if you will, if we allow ourselves to go across any interval. Um, remember, x wouldn't be defined at zero, so as long as I, um, so this will be like when x is greater than zero, and I would have gotten a second solution when x was less than zero. We divided by x to the six, so we can't have x equals zero. That's one of those singular points. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, in this case, because e to the negative log x is just one over x, so I have k times one over x. So now I know what v prime is. So if v prime is k times one over x, then v, uh, then v itself will be k over x, the integral of k over x, and so that would be um, k natural log of absolute x plus some other constant, I don't know, c1. And from here now, I just need to, now that I know what v is, I get my y2 by replacing, remember y2 is supposed to be v times y1, or v times x to the fourth, and therefore I get that it is k natural log absolute x plus c1 times x to the fourth, where k and c1 are any real number. So this gives me a second solution. Let's quadruple check that my solution actually worked. Now notice that this solution I got actually has two parts. It has the k x to the fourth natural log x part, absolute x part, and then the other part is just coming from the solution I already had. So when I check the solution, I really can just look at the portion that's um, linearly independent from my original solution, the plus c1 x to the fourth part. 
I can ignore. And I'm going to let k equal 1 because why not? So I'm just going to check does x to the fourth log x, and I'll let x greater than 0, so now I don't have to worry about the absolute value signs, solve my equation. So does it solve x squared y double prime minus 7xy prime plus 16y equals 0? So let's see if that's the case. Y2 prime would be 4x cubed natural log x plus x to the fourth over x or 4x cubed ln x plus x cubed, which just to save me effort later, I'm going to rewrite as x to the four x to the third times 4 ln x plus 1. So then y2 double prime will be 3x squared times 4 natural log x plus 1 plus x cubed times 4 over x. So replacing into the differential equation, I get x squared times 3x squared times 4 log x plus 1 plus 4x cubed over x. Notice that's just 4x squared minus 7x times x cubed 4 log x plus 1 plus 16 x to the fourth log x. So looking at the first term here, I get 12 x to the fourth natural log x plus 3 x to the fourth plus 4 x to the fourth minus 7 times 4 is 28 x to the fourth natural log x. 7 x times x cubed times 1 would be minus 7x to the fourth only. And then the last term I'm going to get is the 16x to the fourth natural logarithm of x. So we look at the x to the fourth first, 3 plus 4 minus 7, that is 0x to the fourth. And then I have 12 minus 28 plus 16x to the fourth log x is, but that's just 0 as well. So that does in fact give me zero, and therefore we have in fact found a solution. So remember, it's almost always the case, except for if there's a domain restriction, that one can get the general form of a solution to a, lin to a linear differential equation by a reduction of order when you know one solution in this form. So we could end the problem by coming back up to the top and saying that the general solution ends up being y equals k x to the fourth natural log x plus c1 x to the fourth. And then if I put the absolute value signs in here, now I've touched all cases. As long as x is not zero. There's one other solution that we're getting, and that's just the straight y equals zero case, and that's true on all x.